Hey, are you all ready to get this started? Going live. Listener discretion is advised. Keep your head out there. They're going to do dumb. Play our game. All right, cool. Play hard, but stay poised. Three, going to be savage. Two, grab your shit. One, do it. Let's be great. Let's be great. John, you've been in this position before where season's lost, the playoffs are gone. How, what can you accomplish in these last two games, and how as a coach can you make sure that it gets accomplished? Well, it's just it's improving. You know, we're in the last quarter of the season, just like the fourth quarter of a game. You know, people remember what you do in December. Um, you know, every time we go out there, it's our resume, whether you're a player, a coach, an assistant coach, um, you know, for the world to see. Um, you know, you take pride in that. You guys are the professionals do. Um, you know, and I think that's what drives all of us. Draft Dr. Phil Atoshan, I am Aldo Gandia, and you just heard Chicago Bears head coach John Fox talk about how people remember what you do in December. Well, we do, John. We won't forget that you are 2-7 and seven in December as Bears head coach, or that you are 0-2 in January. And we certainly won't forget that you are 12 and 32 overall in your three seasons as coach of the Bears. That is the worst winning percentage in the history of the Bears franchise, 272. That's a uh, average that I know draft Dr. Phil bettered when he was playing baseball as a young tot. Right, draft Dr. Phil? <laughs> Welcome to your show. <laughs> What's happening, bro? What did you what hit you when doing, you were in the love. little league, uh, Phil? I know you hit like about four or five hundred, right? I wish. <laughs> no, I was a good hitter though. Baseball was actually my best sport, and unfortunately, I just it didn't draw me like football did. And uh, looking back on it, my wife likes to joke: uh, maybe you could have went pro in baseball. You were too short for football. <laughs> 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 there, well, been, there have been some great, what it is. There have been some great uh baseball players who uh who are five five, five four, five six. <laughs> what what how how tall are you? Let your fans know how tall you are with uh three inch platforms on. <laughs> I'm actually five foot seven and a half. All right, I got a perfect pick- five, and I'm five ten in the Hofstra uh media guide. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to see that. <laughs> I got to post this picture that you have uh, somewhere of you and Kyle, oh, Long, <laughs> Kyle Long shoulder to shoulder. I should say shoulder to wrist. And, and <laughs> it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's it's a, a testament, not really to how short you are, but what a big man Kyle Long is. That must have been uh, quite the thrill to take that picture alongside Kyle, huh? Oh, well, there's no doubt. I mean, sometimes – I don't think people realize how big these athletes are. I know just being growing up in a football family, I was fortunate enough to be in many of a locker room and meet many of a pro and to be around them and the immensity and the the unbelievable athletic traits that some of these 345 pound men and 325, 290, whatever that player may be positionally possess it's unbelievable so when god gives somebody that kind of talent getting into where we are in chicago it's up to the coach and the coaching staff to untap it and put it in positions to better itself and and you look at kyle long i mean standing next to him i mean he's the epitome of what a left tackle should be and how god would want that player to protect a football quarterback's blind side. He's just immense, quick, athletic, and has that switch that we've seen 
that is a fiery switch that he's not going to let anyone bully him or be bullied whatsoever. He has that chip on his shoulder, much like his dad did, that he's not going to back down from a fight. And those are the type of guys you want playing offensive line for you, especially at the tackle position. But yeah, the picture, this picture speaks a thousand words. When I got to, to meet him, he was a com- real classy kid and, and, a, and a very good person. And it was nice to be able to uh, talk with him for 25 minutes or so talking about the game. Uh, Trey uh, Busy writes in the chat room that not only is Kyle Long a big guy, but he's also as fast as F. A couple of years ago at training camp, he saw him running down the sideline. He was just burning it up. So, uh, yeah, like you said, these guys are tremendous athletes, and the weight, the strength, the uh, endurance, the durability, the the passion, it's why we uh, love this game so much. But we didn't love what we saw on the football field Sunday. The Bears, a loser to the San Francisco 49ers. Everybody in the chat room and everybody throughout Twitter sphere and everybody who will be listening to this on podcast is dying to hear your thoughts on what happened on that football field yesterday, Phil. So go at it. You know, it's unfortunate because you don't like to be right when it's so wrong and when I'm in writing mode, which I've been for days now, and doing this Christmas album for the Bears bar room that is just going to blow people's minds, I think, because it's I'm doing it with the creative people, and I'm blown away by what what is we have in store for the bar flies and the loyal listeners that unite and i'm proud of it so in singing that theory i'm just looking at a football team going down the drain with the coach just absolutely singing a different tune than what his players need to hear and looking at that game i saw that this was going to happen a mile away because you have a young offensive minded head coach on the other side of the football field get it getting his first opportunity to work with someone they traded for and clearly is the future of their franchise and have a real identified plan of attack for their quarterback and how they were going to go about their game plan and really ultimately the Bears defense was keeping them in it their special teams especially cohen was keeping them in this game and was covering over the pathetic and completely overwhelmed offensive coordinator and coach at dowell loggins it's just mind-boggling the personnel it's like i'm a broken record i feel bad for the listeners because i'm saying the same stuff every week but it's 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 clearly there are other people's listening. There are other people listening to our show. Not only the bar flies, but trust me, it's been confirmed. Taking from Shane, Aldo, and myself, and putting it in their newspapers and their blogs, and our thoughts, and that's fine. Uh, the bar flies are pointing it out, and that means a lot to me. But really, ultimately, it's the ultimate compliment, and, and that's how I take it. And I know that's how Aldo takes it. But Looking at that game, if you're not uh, uh, fired up with the answers and the rationale and the reasoning and the effort, it's just, it's so pathetic that I know that if I went and had the opportunity to coach this football team, you'd never see that happen. And when you get that kind of rage that you know that, Many a people that would do a better job and would love the opportunity to turn that thing around and could, but you have these penny pinchers and Ted and George and Ernie Accorsi coming in and all these stupid shoe salesmen not going back to the roots of where the grandfather had the plan of recognizing that this professional game, this football, is so important to the country and the environment of, you know, where America is and breathes. They love this game, college and pro. To have that forethought and really 
make a franchise that's blood and glory is in its players and its history now you're taking it forward to here and it it was a mockery on display of all mockeries from having tight end Shaheen sit on the bench to the worst football player I've ever seen starting as a Chicago Bear in Michael Burton getting out snapping him it's pathetic I don't know if they're watching tape Aldo because I see it and other coaches I know see it and are cracking up hysterically at the efforts made by the fullback getting in the way of Jordan Howard. He's a fit guy, and you're trying to run power game, and you need a, a guy that's a bulldozer, not a guy that's a fitter. And, and to watch it, every aspect of it, from Bobby Massey and looking around and Benny Cunningham getting in the game on third downs. Let me ask you this, you know. Throw everything else the freak out, because I know this is a family show. But let me ask you this. In what sane football mind, even the kid down the street playing goddamn Madden football, is putting Benny Cunningham in his rostered game? <laughs> when you have a Tariq Cohen sitting there, if you want to bring a third down back in and use him that way. Because last I checked, you're paying a guy... Six million dollars. He has one catch. One. One catch. And he's sitting on the side. You cut Trey McBride because Josh drops Bellamy, is getting at his girl's DMs and has a relationship with Fox or whatever is going on there. This snowball shitstorm of a mess that is John Fox and his staff from personnel to personal, all the way down to the technique on how they step out and deliver the blow and fire out all the way to their effort and leadership down the line to putting goddamn Chris Pruszynski out there over a guy that's been in the locker room working his way back to try to get to this point in DeAndre Hall. All of them. Now, I understand you have injuries and what have you, but in what sense of the word does that even make sense? If anything, as I've said and tweeted out, you move Kyle Fuller, you teach him for the week to play free safety, and you put the other investment that you had in Cooper, and that's how you win football games, by using your best. Not signing a guy that's familiar with your system that stinks and putting him out there who's just a special teamer. Oh, wait a second. Josh Bellamy, no. Chris Brzezinski, both just special teams. That's it. The story is one that is so ridiculous. The fact that Pace didn't fire this guy after Green Bay, after Detroit, now after this, I don't even know what that, that was a giant meatball of garbage that you saw at Soldier Field and it, it's it's almost comical. I never in my life found myself rooting against my Chicago Bears. And it, it was the weirdest feeling because I was just utterly feeling like the guy lucky enough to be not in the accident, passing by, but I can't take my eyes off of it. And, and it's just comical that it was so bad, Aldo. It's like, I got to... I got so upset, I had to quote my thoughts. And I don't know if you saw it, but I wrote a note to myself. And I said, Phil, your team, the Bears, are the worst coached professional team that I have ever seen in a long, long time. They have no rhyme or reason for offense. They have no plan for their young QB and don't know how to use him to help build his confidence and the team's. That is on the head coach, and I know that because I'm a, a blood son of a head football coach. I know what a person who takes ownership and doesn't pass the buck onto everybody else. You win in December, John? Are you an absolute uh, moron of epic proportions? <laughs> you are worse than anything Mark Tressman ever said. Anybody see me in the street, I would take Mark Tressman back 
over this BS and arrogance at three wins. Their three wins are last year, Aldo. Guess what? Their three wins this year. Guess what? They've won three divisional games. That's how you get to the playoffs. John Fox is pathetic. The McCaskies are pathetic. I got to go in on this, Aldo. I don't give two craps. You sold tickets. You inherited a billion-dollar gift from your freaking family. And he's the old man's rolling over in his grave, coming through, asking me to talk for him. Because this is a disgusting play. You don't fire head coaches. and Why? Give me an answer why it's okay that you're telling your fan base it doesn't matter, your team it doesn't matter, that this schmo, this absolute moron, <laughs> I see I was tricked. I've admitted. I've confessed, Aldo. I thought this guy would come in here with offensive coordinators and guys that were familiar with really striving to be head coaches and bust their humps. Instead, we got Dowell waving at flies, as Zim said. That's exactly what he is. He's a fly waver and nothing else. He has no feel. Nothing. He doesn't understand formations and situational football. He doesn't understand... Who his best football player is, let alone how to attack a defense or zone and half it off and use the tight ends through the seams. He doesn't understand how to run high-low and attack downfield. He doesn't understand how to run a counterplay. He doesn't even understand that he's got the worst fullback I've ever seen. But that's this whole spiel and unfortunately i don't know if this is gonna get better with pace if he doesn't have the cojones to set the tone like like the new york giants say what you want about that crap storm but at least they had the cojones to get rid of the general manager get rid of the head coach you saw the problems it's time it was way past time. And I got to say, Aldo, you going out there, a lot of the bar flies holding up the signs. Keep it going. Don't back down. You back down from a fight? I don't. Never. Don't, don't back down. Keep it going. Start. We are going to drop songs. I'm only happy that he didn't get fired. So Not our really. creative songs <laughs> and our calendar has come out. What an excellent job by Bears, girl. I mean, what an addition. You talk about being a, a scout. I don't know if I'm one of the best scouts. I, I've scouted uh, Shane Marsaw, a Jose Cotto, a Lauren Cox. I scouted uh, Aldo Gandhi and my relationship. I'm pretty good <laughs> at what I do, and, and I think I help find – Bears girl and Aldo, God, God bless this guy, being a GM of the Bears bar room, <laughs> signing Bears girl Sign. and Johnny Buffon in here, Wazram, and now Nikki. You, you're really getting, you're getting a team here. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to be your your hope for the future <laughs> of the Bears bar room because right now we aren't gonna back down. We are going to get this fixed, and we're going to tell you how to get it fixed. I don't know how to express how disappointed I am any better than that. And, and if bar flies, I set the fire last night, Aldo. I don't know if you got to watch my video. I went live for the first time on Twitter. No, I missed because, it. Yeah, I went live on Twitter. I had the bonfire going. I had a tree, a tree branch fall down in our yard. I had to cut it up. <laughs> And my wife said, like, you got to get those branches. And I, was, I went out there after the game, and the boys were helping pile. And then I was like, you know what? I'm so pissed off. I am so tired, exhausted, just completely and utterly drained from stupidity. Like, I don't know if you've ever taught. I, I used to be a substitute teacher. I went into corrections. I've done a lot of things in my life. But I'm always the teacher, 
and I have passion for it. And I know some of you listening in could understand this concept. But when you pour your heart and soul into a project or something you're passionate about, like I am about you all and the Bears Bar Room, and you're teaching someone this and they just don't get it, it is the most draining thing because you just you want them to understand it, but they just don't get it. And, and that's what I see on Sunday when I watch John Fox not challenge a critical fourth down and inches again. Uh, clearly, I put up the video. If you haven't seen it, um, one of the bar flies, please go retweet it. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo Aldo comes up a half yard clear, clear as clear as the day sun. Yep. yep. And all he has to do is challenge it. You're at home. Shane and I talked about this. The Bears media has yet to ask John. So who's your guy watching to tell you? And if he refuses the answer, then you need to take it to the top. Ryan Pace, George Bay. Who do you freaking have watching the goddamn plays that are critical on a Sunday afternoon? Who's in there? Because they aren't doing their job. Because if that's a communication thing and you're at home, I can understand a little leeway. When you're on the road, you might not get the view. But you're at home with 65 camera angles, more than the television has. And you don't have a guy that's telling you, hey, that's short. I'm at home, Aldo. I'm at home watching it. On a broadcast that could give two craps about the Bears. And I saw it. How many other of you saw it? It's disgusting. And that person should be fired too. And it's those little things that mean a lot. It's a game of inches. We say it all the time. I always taught my players, there's two things that are small, that are really huge. Catching and dropping the football and understanding when you need to go for an opportunity to win the game. you got to take a chance. This staff does not know either, and that is my opening rant. That was quite the rant. Let me give you some feedback from what we're uh, hearing from people on our chat room. Uh, Brandon Janoski asked, uh, what about Chance the Rapper as the interim coach? <laughs> I love that idea. And while you were talking about Kyle Long, uh, three and nine sad Bears fan, AJ wrote, I feel like Kyle Long has more on his plate because Bobby Massey is so bad. And there might be some truth to that, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to protect the guards. I don't know. Bobby Massey, there was one tweet. I don't know where I came up with it in my head, but he just reminded me of one of those rent-a-movie cops as he's just watching to not get involved, but get kind of maybe I got to get involved. It was a screenplay, and a lot of the bar flies like the tweet. I, I got a chuckle out of it because Bobby Massey, I mean, the plays he put on tape were – Awful. Awful, Awful. indeed. Uh, Trey Busy, who is uh, on fire on the chat room, he's got a lot of funny ones, including John Fox is a moron and got out coached by a first-year head coach. How true is that? Um, Trey also wrote that the Bears trade Jordan Howard. I'll drive to Hallis Hall tomorrow morning and break every window on that. Oh, my God. I don't know who I was busy recording uh, in the recording studio at the house here, creating for the Bears Bar Room this Christmas album. I came back, Aldo, to my phone, and I see about 20-plus sign, and there's like 70 tweets about Jordan Howard and trading Jordan Howard and what have you. And uh, honestly, let me just say something right here and right now. You can say what you want about Jordan Howard and his hands or what have you. But think about the position and above itself in today's game and how it's viewed. It's not viewed as important as it should be, number one. But when you have a pathetic offensive coordinator who doesn't have a clue in how to recognize, to check, and get people out of the box, 
what Jordan Howard is doing is even more impressive because he is your offense. There is no offense without him. He is the reason Cohen could do what he could do. He's the reason Mitchell Trubisky can do what he could do. And he is an unbelievably talented, beyond your pathetic display on Twitter, understanding of what I identify a football player to be. I can never speak highly, this high of a football player than I do about the guy on tape, his feel, instincts, his intangible toughness, and his unwillingness to go down, just like you saw in the promo tonight against the Ravens. Jordan Howard is the only reason why you have a win this year. And John Fox's resume has three on this year, and it's because of Jordan Howard. And and really, I don't think Bears fans understand that how great of a draft pick he was in the fifth round and how immensely great he is as a foundation piece for a potential head coach coming in here knowing – you don't get rid of something you've got that is tremendous to replace it with an unknown. You see guys come and go all the time. But when I see elite traits, which Jordan Howard is in that category, Aldo, this is an untouchable guy. He is not someone you would ever trade. I can't say enough. He is the MVP. In fact, we have a song about him. I wrote a song about Jordan Howard with Aldo Gandia. Yes, Aldo Gandia <laughs> wrote a song with me, and it's about Jordan Howard. It is fun, and I finished that up tonight, Aldo. So we are – I just don't get fans sometimes. I'm sorry. It's, it's Lennon, nothing – It's Lennon and McCarthy, man, you, you and me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I, I'm sorry for, to interrupt you, but I want to read a couple more of these uh, – uh, uh, messages from our chat room. Uh, <laughs> Bears Girl, when you were talking about the coaching staff and Tressman, Bears Girl says that to tell you that Tressman ain't leaving Toronto, that they're going to keep him up there. <laughs> and a lot of people hey, are went actually up there. Here. He won again. <laughs> he did. He did. He's found a home with Canadian football. There's something that guy can do. There's no doubt about that. Um, Airjare, when you were talking about Benny Cunningham, Airjare54 says, Benny Cunningham couldn't run for coffee for me, and I don't even drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah Robles uh, asks, you know, if uh, that he's not impressed with uh, Ryan P that he, he's not impressed with, with Ryan Pace, that his drafts are okay, but the fact that he still has Fox on this team, so he has to be an idiot. An idiot. So that's the big question. Is he, yeah, is he being stopped by the McCaskey family? from firing Fox during the season or or what's going on Phil what are your thoughts unfortunately this is a family show <laughs> but this if this was asked tomorrow night I think I'd start with a P and a Y at the end of it if you could <laughs> fill in that blank that's the answer I want to know is he the P word is he being told what to do that's on the media as well these big tough guys behind the keyboard, the you fill in the blank of who you want because none of them have impressed me as far as being tough. I know a lot of uh, fans started getting on them today. Don't back down. Who are they? They're nothing without you. Just like we're nothing without you too. Your voice all matters to us. As Shane said, we're not charging $2 for a shout out. We love you because you're family. And this show is all about really getting down and dirty with the truth. And I got to call them out. The media is a bunch of peas. And, and really, they should get the answer from Ryan Pace. There should be no backing down. You know, a good uh, reporter gets the story no matter what. They get the answers of truth. There's no way to get out of the truth. John Fox can stand up there and lie all you want. At what point is that an unacceptable to you as an organization, as a professional franchise? That is, you can swallow that and digest it and be okay with your media group. One more question, guys. One more. No. This needs to be answered. What? Who is hiring and who is firing coaches? Because if Ryan Pace has continued down this path, 
with John Fox, then yes, there needs to be huge questions of this man and his integrity because anybody and their cousin, the taxi driver, the airline stewardess, the pizza maker, the delivery boy, the guy that delivers eggs knows that John Fox should not be the coach anymore. It's just not working. This isn't t John taking a test on his football IQ. This is about making decisions on Sunday that matter most. Like, but right personnel, right game plan, understanding who you're scouting and where their weakness is. San Francisco knew exactly what they were doing. Where's Pruszynski? That's where we're going. Where's Pruszynski? That's where we're going. It, it was so simple. It was so easy for them. And, and they settled for field goals and took their time and stomped your throat at home. Again, John Fox, 0-7 when he's favored. There's nothing good that comes with Coach Fox right now. Ryan Pace, we need answers. We need the truth. We need you to be a man. You could stand up there and say all you want about an, a, a, a competitive advantage. And there is no com competition anymore. It's done. You got no shot. There's no playoff. There's nothing for you but answers. And we need them because we care. And you have us over the pipe that's burning. And that's how you're going to be? Arrogant and not? No. I think you owe us something back. I think a change needs to occur. George, uh, I mean, excuse me, Greg Gabriel would, said he would be shocked if, a, if uh, a coaching change wouldn't happen this week. Well, Greg, I hope he's alive. I worry about him. <laughs> he's, because, he's in the hospital suffering from shock. <laughs> <laughs> because that's my boy right there. And, and I got to concern myself because I'm in shock. My father's in shock. My uncle, Sam Ritigliano. Is it shock that this is how they run their team? It's like uh, Larry Pasquale. Uh, Phil, you could hire uh, Greg Schiano right now would have had that team competitive on Sunday. Yep. And somebody in this organization, anybody, anybody but John Fox needed to come to the podium this week for change. But they didn't do it. And that's against you all and me and Shane Martin. When, when I know people that love this team to the extent where they spend thousands of dollars on them, I'm talking their kids, the pacifiers, the onesie, the jersey, the game, the popcorn, Aldo with the beer, and the, <laughs> and the, the hot dogs. Whatever you did, you spent towards this family <laughs> they owe you they owe me i paid for the sunday ticket aldo <laughs> I, to watch this travesty and well, watch this guy mumble at us <laughs> exactly well and to that point frankie myers writes where the hell is ryan pace through all this he should be front and center talking us off the ledge and isaiah robles and i actually talked about this on dm uh on, on the twitter dm he asked me, you know, given that I worked with the media, what, why isn't Pace being interviewed by the press and so forth? And the, uh, the answer is obvious. He has a contract. The Bears have a contract with uh, WBBM Radio, and he does a pregame interview with Jeff Joniak, and so it's all controlled. The questions are controlled. He gives the answers that are company approved and so forth. But in terms of him talking to the media, the actual sports journalist world, that's not going to happen. He has chosen or the organization has chosen not to talk publicly about the season because clearly he's going to be asked, why is John Fox, st Fox still employed? He's going to be asked all of these tough questions, and they don't want to go through the trauma of, of answering those questions. And I totally agree with Frankie on this. Listen, I, when I worked, I worked in corporate communications for about 15, 20 years. When there was a controversy, the thing is to come out front and center, not hide. Mm -hmm. You come out mm -hmm. front and center and you tell people, okay, this is where we screwed up and this is how we're trying to fix it. You, that's how you handle it. And, uh, and then if you're, if you're asked a tough question about, you know, why is he still employed, you figure out the best answer for that and you sell that answer. But you don't F and hide 
from from your fans. Uh, that's the worst thing to do because they will start turning on you, and that's what's happening. Stacy Hefner writes, Pace is in over his head. And and that's what fans now, you know, he still has a lot of supporters, but fans now are rightfully questioning Ryan Pace's ability to uh, to uh, general manage this team. Phil, let uh, me say this. Jump in there real quick. Jump in. Stacey Hefner has been tremendous. Uh, if you're not following her, I, she's been a, just jumping in here and there. I had to follow her back. I'm going to start trying to follow people that interact with passion back, that go out there with the signs or or have a sense of humor in this times of trial. That's what we are trying to do. That's why I've, I've spent hours and hours of writing these songs. I can't express it enough, but passion comes by people from all races, ethnicities, and sexes, and, and really... I have been so impressed with the female bar fly that has come out of the woodwork with their football knowledge, their passion, their understanding of the game, and their love for the game. I can't express that enough. And Stacy asking and saying that really brought – it was kind of in chorus with what I was going to say to Isaiah and you breaking that down tremendously, Aldo, really – at what point, you know, just like some people are meant to be offensive coordinators, are meant to be defensive coordinators, a really great special teams coach, or a really great running backs coach, and that's it. They really can't lead a team and lead a, a, a franchise. You know, in this volatile situation, that is, hiding behind Jeff Joniak and controlled questions is a complete an utter disgrace and a showcase that you are in over your head to me. And, and I have a lot of connections around the NFL in different um, uh, organizations as well as positions and ranks and, and scouting and agents and what have you and personnel department and coaches and offensive line coach. One thing that has always, always creeped itself to the top and I always kind of didn't want to believe it. But now the joke's on me. And I'm going to confess it here on Bears Hour Live. Every person I knew and know in the NFL and former Bears players that have played there and worked there have said the issue is up top. Mm-hmm. It's up top. It's if... A new person, head coach, comes in here and Ted Phillips stays. We are – what is the term? What is the term? If you keep doing it and it doesn't work, Dick Jerron, Love V. Smith, uh, <laughs> Mark Trestman. Now you're here with this schmo, John Fox. Something isn't working on the track. The train is going to crash. And it continues to be a track issue. So Ted Phillips is a common denominator here, right? He's been here with all of these coaches. He's he's going to be at that press conference at the end of the year. And I know Shane said this, and I agreed with it 100% because it read my mind. And Barflies, you tell me. If I don't see Black Monday, Ryan Pace by himself, talking about what's going on we have huge issues again and we are going to go live and talk about them because this needs to be addressed ryan not with some political banter because that don't work this is football it's a game it's not that hard it's complex but it's not that hard (laughs) and and really ultimately it comes down to getting the right football person in here that's going to tell and guess what aldo Coincidentally, we had two jerk-offs coaching in Buddy Ryan and Mike Ditka. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. They said, screw you. I need this. This is what I need. This is what I do. This is what I – and you might not agree with them. They might cause headlines in the newspaper. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're prepared. They played to win, and they were physical, and they were appropriate – Every Sunday, even through the 90s, 
I think Dick is last year. He's nine and seven. We haven't seen nine wins since when? Tressman, his <laughs> first year. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, to me, Aldo, a football guy needs to be hired. If I'm at the point, I don't care about Pace and his pretty good picks here and there. We can go seesaw it, and we can go tit for tat there. And say, well, McPhee and we in who the hell signed Mike Glennon like that to me is like that joke in high school. The kid who went with the ugliest looking girl at homecoming dance (laughs) that I mean, who signed Mike Glennon, whoever signed on that 18 million. I mean, that's on your resume. Your words are your words. I don't care what anyone tries to sell. That's a huge issue. So Ryan Pace, as Stacey said, I'm at the point where I'm on that other side of, you know, the smartest man of the bar room of Ryan Pace has shown seasonally that he has been overwhelmed with this job because he hasn't stepped to the forefront. He hasn't done what's right. It doesn't look like this matters to him. This runaway train that's going to crash and that has crashed out though doesn't matter to him and really ultimately you're telling that to the team you're telling that to the scouts that are on the road and you're telling that to the fans and and the media the media have dropped the ball completely brad biggs uh david hall uh adam johns all these tough talkers on a keyboard but really get there they're worried about how the media is going to think about them the next time they have a question. That, If that's your goal, if you don't have pride in saying, no, I'm going to ask the tough question no matter what, and I'm going to keep coming back, and that's my job. If they're worried about Jim, whoever the hell, the media guy is at the Bear, and we're not going to, don't, don't call on Brad. No, you make yourself be known. And really, Ryan Pace needs to come out of hiding. If he doesn't, we're going to have to smoke him out <laughs> like uh, so many of the uh, barflies are talking <laughs> about in the chat room. All right. Um, I, w- I want to uh, switch topics here, and I want to get to the Christmas album. But before I do that, Phil, if you will allow me to tell a quick story, I uh, posted yesterday a picture of Tariq Cohen um, that, <laughs> that uh, after the game yesterday. So I, I promised uh, the barflies I would share the story about how that happened. Absolutely. So after the game, uh, my nephew and I, uh, we head over to downtown where I parked. We parked about two miles from the stadium, and uh, we stop off at this fried chicken place, and we're, we're eating, and uh, the service was awful, and thank goodness, because it delayed us so much that by the time we got back to our car, we head into our car, and all of a sudden, I see this short african-american guy getting into this really expensive uh suv and so my 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 nephew looks at me and says hey and i go yeah that's that's tariq cohen and he goes yeah that's him that's him he gets all excited like a like a little girl and stuff and frankly i did too (laughs) 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 and so he uh he quickly puts it in reverse and starts to pull out pull his car out and i'm thinking to myself I got to get a picture of him, at least that, right? So I block his way out of the garage. I pull my car right in front of his car. He lowers down the window, and he had this look like, are these guys going to hijack my car or something? He, he had this look like we were going to, we were going to, you know, shoot him and take his car or something. And, and my nephew, he looks like an, like a, like a guy from ISIS. So he probably saw him and really got worried. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I, I no, seeing that look on his face that he was, he was really, he looked petrified. I said to him, hey, man, I'm really, really sorry, but I love you. I love you. What you did today was awesome. I love you. And so I, said, I kept saying like three or four times, I love you to Tariq Cohen. And he was like, oh, cool, man. Thanks a lot. And my, my nephew says a few words. And then finally, I, I, I say, can I take a picture with you? I wanted to interview him and stuff, but clearly it, it wasn't an appropriate time. So I bugged him enough to snap that picture and take that picture. But the, the, the funny thing about the story was just the way that he looked. I, he, he clearly looked 
looked like. And maybe <laughs> we, my nephew and I were joking about it on the way home, saying maybe he had a heat in his car. He was going to pull out some weapon and, 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 and shoot at us. <laughs> we, we were lucky to come out of it alive. But uh, T- Tariq is a stand-up guy uh, to allow two, uh, two feverish Chicago Bears fans. <laughs> I see a rope list just right. I would have climaxed all the <laughs> it was pretty Let exciting. Let me ask you this, Al. Uh-huh. I mean, did the fried chicken help him plumb <laughs> return? I mean, he's stopping in for chicken before the game. But... Well, maybe that's it. <laughs> we were freaking out. He might have a sponsorship going on here. <laughs> really? We were freaking out wondering why he was parked there. You know, did he get dropped off by a limo? And that's where he parks his car. It was kind of, kind of strange. So we were... We were uh, uh, taking guesses as to what, what the whole deal was, and I frankly I forgot the name of the fried chicken place, but it was a lot better than uh, KFC. <laughs> Three and nine, <laughs> sad Bears fan AJ. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was definitely not KFC. It was some really delicious uh, uh, fried chicken. Okay, now it is time to talk about something that you have been pouring your heart, your sweat, your your creative tears into for. Several days now, uh, I, I want you to talk a little bit about the Christmas CD that is going to be released very soon. We've already put up a calendar for every song that we're going to release day by day up until Christmas Eve. All 23 songs will be released by then. Phil, talk a little bit about uh, what you've put into it and what the fans can expect, and then we're going to play one of the songs. Well, it's a real passion project because it came about, I'm a competitive guy, as everyone should know by now, and I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I really love this Bears Barroom Radio Network and and the team that we have working it and really building it up from the ground up and, and talking football, obviously, the foundation is the Chicago Bears, and our passion is in within that. And, and really trying to do creativity through it, really inspired by Shane and, and doing our show, and, and Aldo doing our show, Bears 100 Proof, and just bringing me back into my passion, as my wife liked to talk to call it, because, you know, I, I kind of set that chapter of my life aside but really in this creative place and, and having fun and, and bringing laughs and, and much needed laughs to the worldwide fan base that we have for this, I consider it obviously just a fun, real analytical look at this team that is focused on the bloodline of truth and to bring music into the process of it really was you and Nick going out on the streets and having the producer talk crap like that about what I think is a tremendous, the anthem, the fire John Fox song. I I can give two crap what anyone says. I know we're working on a video to that and what have you and play it loud, play it strong and be proud with it and and really when it became the christmas challenge i was like you know what i'll do a christmas song and then it turned into you know what i'm gonna do 22 songs because i want to do it for the bar and we're just talking in that creative process we have a dm room that we go back and forth and talk creatively trying to think of great ideas to bring to the show and really Doing a Christmas song started with the O Football Town of Chicago to the t- tune of O Little Town of Bethlehem. And once I did that, I'm like, wait, a I got something special here that we could bring creatively to talk about this disgusting display of a team and a head coach and really just bring some light to the season. I love Christmas. I'm a big christmas guy and with the family and what have you and be able to relate and 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 work with my children on this album and put it together for my friends shane wrote a song uh bears girl wrote a song and aldo all wrote a song and have been involved in helping but really when 
you get to hear these songs, you'll understand like tonight's song. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just enjoy putting music together and lyrics creatively and, 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 and have a fun time with it. And I think I'm proud of this stuff and I'm proud of what, when you hear it. And I know, you know, to use Isaiah, who's in the chat room, as an example, there's little things I do in songs that are, I call them Easter eggs and what have you. Like, and uh, you kind of hear them and you grasp onto them. And when you shout them out, Driscola, and a bunch of you have also done it. And, and you recognize little pieces of the project that come together that make it full. And when I was doing the, uh, the Truth song, for our 100 proof show and i was just joking at the end with shane being a mailman and i was like deliver the mail and it's in the song and then someone picks up on i like that part it just catches with you Excellent. like one of the songs i can't get out of my head <laughs> really <laughs> even though i've done 22 songs i can't get this one larry mayer song out of my head <laughs> it's like it will not stop it's so funny and good i can't wait for that one to come out but i just can't get it out of my head and it's my wife singing it the kids are singing it. i'm like <laughs> cracking up but i don't that's a little teaser down the road but you know this is a passion project mm -hmm. and i so Want to from my bottom of my heart before we play it i just want to thank you all that go out of your way to speak up praise shout out be passionate about what we do we hear you i respond to you i don't disregard anybody i don't care if you have three followers or twenty thousand and three. i don't care I just recognize a person and a human being for who they are. And in today's society, I think there's too many people that are just full of shit and full of themselves. And I know Shane likes to talk about me and, and joke, and we all have a good time. But really, ultimately, I know that I look in the mirror every day, and I love the person that I try to be towards everybody, and especially in the bar room with the bar flies because without you like i said there's no charging for shout outs there's no charging for anything other than if we need something to better our product for you we might charge for a t-shirt or a cd or whatever it is gonna be but there's never going to be a charge to <laughs> praise somebody in any way because you guys are the reason why we're here and I can never thank you enough. And I, I just wanted to say that because they went out there, uh, Aldo, and, and after the song, we'll come back. Because I want to shout out those guys that went out there on a mission for the Barflies, Barfly Army, putting up the Firefox signs. I want to make sure we shout them out and praise them for going out there and tagging Bar Bears Barroom in it, knowing that Aldo, and I'm saying this as a truth 100% truth was the guy that started hashtag Firefox and bringing, and Sandy Tom was one of the first people to ever bring the AVI, one of our huge bar flies over there in Scotland, Aberdeen now though, Scotland putting his AVI as Firefox after Aldo said it on the Bears Barroom Radio Network and, and I'm all about standing up for the truth but this is important because there is an originator. Like when I started the Stop Jacism campaign, people were stealing it and there and there. And some people would step up. But then when people don't, it's like a letdown. So I'll never let you down, Aldo. I just know as creative as I am with music, you are a genius when it comes to hashtags and, and, <laughs> and pumping this stuff out. So I just don't want it to go overlooked. Well, and I appreciate appreciated those bar flies going out there. They, we are blessed with having uh, some some great great fans, followers, friends, family. Uh, Barflies is what the name we came up with to just encompass all of that, and we really really appreciate it. Phil, you want to say anything about uh, in particular about this song that we're going to hear, Fire Coach Fire Coach Fox Christmas? You know, some of these songs, Aldo, especially when they come out, 
are not even in my genre. Like, I wouldn't even think of doing it. This song is one of those, but I remember being a little kid and seeing the Christmas special, Holly Jolly Christmas. Mm -hmm. Have a holly jolly Christmas. And I just thought it was <laughs> it was a cute, you know, he was, a, he was a snowman and he's singing. And, and really that inspired me to put this together. It was the first, it was before true backstory here Aldo I came up with this song before Oh Football Town of Chicago oh, this really? was the first song I was going to do and then I really just started to you know if you listen to Oh Football Town of Chicago uh, I don't know why I say it like that but <laughs> if you listen to it there's some really good lyrics in there in regards to the coaching search and Bears Bar Room and Harbaugh and what have you. If you know me, you know the song. So this one actually was the original song that I was going to say, let's send a Waddle and Sylvie and F them and have the bar flies go crazy and this is what we need and yes, Sylvie and Waddle play it and, and that's what we're going to ask you to do because you know what? In the creative think tank, in the huddle, we are going to send this song to Waddle and Sylvie tomorrow. And Aldo, I don't know what else I could say about it. I just enjoy it, and then we'll come back and talk about it. That sounds good. Hi, boys and girls. It's your boy, MC Fulfill. Bring in Bears Barroom, a phone to find Christmas track. Have a fire, Coach John Fox Christmas. Will be the best day of the year. Bears fans know that he must go. Three division wins made it clear. Have a fire coach, John Fox Christmas. Tired of the lies at Hallis Hall. Teddy, George, and Ryan Pace fixed the charter franchise foot. The best day of the year. Bear fans know that he must go. Three division wins made it clear. Have the fire coach John Fox Christmas. Tired of the lies at Hallis Hall. Teddy, George, and Ryan Pace fix the charter franchise of football. Oh no, the mumble show center stage where. That would be the best Christmas of all if we can get that. <laughs> we got some comments on the chat room. I love this song, says Isaiah Robles. Lucky Kurtz, I just got wood. I wonder what that means. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Benjamin Drisgula says, great song, Phil. Very, very funny. Um, and on and on and on. The praise is coming in, and there's going to be much more over the next three weeks as we release a song a day, and we will be releasing them through the um, a Bears Ballroom Radio Network podcast server. So the idea is every day, every morning, you're going to wake up, and you will see a new song, a new Philatotion song, a Christmas parody song about the Bears, 
and we'll be playing some of them on our shows on Bears Hour Live, on Bears 100 Proof, on uh, on John Buffon's show, Buffon 55, Bears on Tap. We'll be playing them throughout, and we're also holding a contest that we're going to announce the final details on that on Wednesday on Bears 100 Proof for f- CDs that we'll be handing out to our bar there flies. There you go. There's going to be some contest, some uh, subscription thing going on that Bears girl, who is the best in the world, I love her so much, she's my muse she's working out all these details uh for us bar flies and and uh as soon as we've got that ready which we will for the bears 100 proof show we'll announce that and and spread it out over social media so tons of great stuff coming primarily from our man draft dr phil Atoshin and the rest of the bar fly team i am so excited about this holiday season it could very well be Wait, wait a minute. Bears Girl just wrote, do not message me wanting a CD. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what's what's better, though, than to, to get a Bears Barroom original CD as well as the artwork mm-hmm. that she has put into this? Each single released is going to have its own artwork. Uh, Bears Girl, like you said, Aldo, I just want to echo that. And Barflush, just recognize some of the stuff that she's put, again, in the passion of it, bringing, it's like a team and a family, all of us at the same time. We're doing this for you, but, you know, putting this artwork together to express my creativity to me is a very flattering thing. So when someone does that kind of, creative side it just it means a lot to me that she's taken on this as a passion herself as well as you putting it all together it it's really coming together and i really i i've had people at work that aren't bears fans that have gone to preview the song out songs and they want cds even though they're not bears fans because it's been so funny it's so fun to do and and, and really we're going to give them away. We've got things planned. And, and what better way to celebrate a miserable season with some parody Christmas songs and holiday to throw them in your, your car with the kids. Uh, there's a few that have hidden meetings in it, but very light on the 100 proof type of the Mike D swears might be. <laughs> on the on the record so there's some there's some little things but i don't want to ruin anything don't but gi- don't give it away don't yeah give we're it not away. gonna give it away but it's gonna be fun and to get one of these i think it, it'll be worth it and and it'll be fun for you to listen in and have them all together on your your cd i know i'm gonna get one all right I, Absolutely, you're gonna get you're gonna get more. Than one. <laughs> All right, uh, as we we always end the show with uh, some uh, some of our uh, chat room quotes. But before I do that, Phil, do you have any last thing to say before I start uh, reading out some of these? And then oh, yeah, we'll, and, want... and then we'll play the song one more time as well. Yes, I just wanted to shout out a few of the guys that went to the game. Um, trying to grab them up on Twitter. Uh, Frank Lucianda, who went out there, braved the game with Aldo Gandia, and put up the Fire Fox sign. My man Jeff, the Dodgers fan. I don't know why I can't find these guys. I had them all queued up. But they went out there. They were holding the sign. Klecos, my boy. The video scoreboard man, Klekos is always, <laughs> Cleve is always up on the big scoreboard screen. Getting on, he's holding up the Firefox sign. Aldo got some hot young ladies holding up the <laughs> sign, right? Yeah, I Get sure some did. volunteers. You bringing it out there with your nephew. That was really great stuff. And I just wanted to make sure I, I shouted you out. I apologize. I'm going to. Make sure I have it for 100 Proof, the shout-out list of guys. And obviously, as we go further into the season here, to end it, those of you continue that, that are going to these games, if you could do something for the Bears Bar Room, if you're going, and do the Fire Fox, or Bears Bar Room, 
whatever it is to get our message out there. Let me uh, read out some of these, some of my favorite, and and there were plenty, man. The chat room was very active, and it got really, really uh, risque there. Uh, Apparently, (laughs) some uh, some people are really uh, attracted to uh, Virginia McCaskey. (laughs) I think Batty Hello started it all when she, when Batty, excuse me, wrote, "As long as Virginia is ultimately calling the shots, pace will always be muzzled." And Trey Busy, man, he deserves a CD just for some of his uh, quotes on chat. He's had everybody uh, cracking up and, and making some astute observations as well. Trey wrote, Marcus Wheaton plays a snap or two a week, but I guess that's worth $6 million. And I wish the <laughs> media would stop acting like Jimmy Garoppolo walked into Soldier Field and got four touchdowns and 400 yards. Ain't that true? Trey also wrote, Jeff Rogers should have been fired after the Ravens game. No way in hell you give up two special teams touchdowns in one game and then another one of my fra- favorites is Trey wrote it's like the coaching hires get progressively worse Lovey Smith then Mark Tressman now John Fox I'm scared of who's next <laughs> <laughs> well, who's done. next <laughs> well done Trey Brandon Janoski wrote guess who else has injuries the Titans and they're eight and four Bob Phelan wrote, I really wanted the attendance in the stadium to plummet. The only thing that will affect this team is cash. The only thing that will affect ownership is cash. Frankie Myers wrote that football and sex are the keys to eternal life. Hence, not hence Virginia McCaskey not selling or firing Ted Phillips. I shouldn't have said that. This is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, in the last minute. Isaiah Robles wrote, I want a CD, but just don't make me pay for a shout out. <laughs> How true is that? <laughs> hey, and I want to take time also to uh, let me uh, play a little bit more background music there. I want to take time, Phil, if you will allow me to read a note that we got from uh, Brett uh, Maley. Um, who is our guy out in Vegas who has been writing a, a great column uh, on the frustrating Bears losses. He wrote to me today, I'm spending way too much time refreshing my t- Twitter f- feed, hoping for news of John Fox's firing. I'm generally a Ryan Pace apologist, but the longer Fox remains coached, the more I'm in favor of a scorched earth policy. Just get rid of everybody associated with this disaster. After a few de- deep breaths, I usually calm down, but if Ryan Pace doesn't see that he is doing willful damage to his franchise quarterback by exposing him to injury and ineptitude with Fox and no gains, log gains, then maybe he's not the man for the job. So, great stuff as always, and if you have not read Brett's column at at bearsbarroom.com. It's a weekly column where he talks about frustrating uh, defeats in Bears recent history, and he's got a lot of material to pick from, but you really need to read that because he just writes his recollections on those uh, frustrating losses in a very entertaining manner. Uh, Phil, we've got another minute here, so it's all yours. Take it away. Well, I had to ask you something because I kind of invited Trey Busy as one of our writers to Absolutely. come on the show 100 proof let's, so, let's pick a date we all we got to do is pick a date cuz uh he he brings it every week chat room his stories for the bar room uh he's going to be on your music video so uh he he's ready to he's ready to rock we just got to pick a date well i know we're going to switch 100 proof because i have a family thing so we're not going to record it tomorrow Barflies. We are going to record it on Wednesday night. My wife's birthday is tomorrow, and I've been spending so much time <laughs> recording these songs. I obviously got to spend a night celebrating her birthday. So look for our podcast to come out on Thursday morning. Correct, Aldo? That is correct. Thursday morning. So, so maybe we can get Trey Biz if he's open and available, and we'll continue to try to get our writers. Chris Armstrong brought it last week. Yeah, uh, on Bears 100 proof. Trey will have uh, tough shoes to fill there because Chris was outstanding, and yeah, all of the writers will be on our shows over the next several months, and uh, and and Trey and I have been talking about doing some stuff over the summer. So yeah, we've got a lot of great stuff happening. Uh, Phil, we're going to close with uh, Firefox one more time, all right? Firefox Christmas. There you go, Firefox Christmas. Hi, boys and girls. It's your boy, MC Fulfill, bringing 
Bear's Ballroom, a fault to find Christmas, Christmas track. Have a fire coach, John Fox Christmas, will be the best day of the year. Bears fans know that he must go, three division wins made it clear. Have a fire coach, John Fox Christmas, tired of the lies at Hallis Hall. Teddy, George, and Ryan Pace fixed the charter franchise football. Oh no, the mumble show, center stage where all can see. Where John Fox talks down to you, but Baron Waddle still be. Have the flyer coach John Fox Christmas, their fans need the cheer. Johnny have a fire Fox Christmas this year. Have a fire coach John Fox Christmas will be the best day of the year. Bear fans know that he must go. Three division wins made it clear. Have a fire coach John Fox Christmas. Tired of the lies at Hallis Hall. Teddy, George, and Ryan Pace fix the charter franchise of football. Oh no, the mumble show, center stage where all can see. Where John Fox talks down to you, there's barroom Waddle Sylvie. Have a fire coach, John Fox Christmas, Bears fans need the cheer. No more Johnny have a fire fire.